Well, hello once again, YouTube viewers. The project that you'll be watching next is one in which I will be adding a niche to this wall. And I want to explain why I've chosen this particular location. I'm going to zoom in on a photograph I took of the same wall when the house was being framed. And I want to point out this right here is the shower area of the master bedroom. And they did not bring the shower all the way out to the external wall. And there's a gap back in there that I noticed that when they were framing it, I asked the builder to put a niche in that matched the arch and the opening size that you see here. This is a little alcove that leads into the master bedroom that's the master bedroom door and I wanted an arched opening exactly the same size as this but I wanted it on this wall so they would be like sister openings and so you can see my intent here is I'm going to put an arch up top and this is only going to be recessed about 12 inches necessary just for some glass bookshelves I am going to raise it up to the base so the floor of the niche will be at the top of the base and I'll match the arch opening. So the first thing I want to do is I don't quite know yet left or right based on how much space I have here. This should be about a 48 inch opening. I need a 42 inch opening and why is that? Well the arch itself from side to side is 36 inches but if I were to actually go inside the niche you can see that we have some flare back on the sides here and that's about what I want to match 42 inches on the inside so the bookshelf would actually sit here against the wall a, bit, a little bit so I want a 36 inch opening here and about a 42 inch opening but what I don't know yet is where that 42 inches will be side to side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an area right between these two studs and I'm going to cut a little square opening. I'm going to go a little bit past each stud. That way if I find that it's not what I think it is, I can put the patch back in, screw it to the studs, fill it in, reapply the texture to the current wall, paint it, and you'll never know I was here. But I'm pretty sure that there is a pretty good recess back there. So I'm going to make a little hole and I'll take some measurements and try to figure out how I can get the arched opening. I mostly want to match this, this distance from the sidewall to the distance from this sidewall. I'm not sure I can match that exactly, but that's going to determine. I'm going to try to move it far right as possible so I have as much space from this little little corner area here I want that distance to be fairly comparable to what it is on the other side I'll get some power for the light in the ceiling of the niche I'm going to steal it from this receptacle and get it back and run it to a switch here in the wall and then I'll run it on up to a light fixture so I'm going to pause I'm going to make a little hole and I'm going to see what things look like all right picking back up what I did, as you can see, I've marked two studs on the wall uh, using a stud finder. That would be the two studs here that I have with the arrow. Those are going to have to come out. So what I'm going to do by putting this hole in the wall is I can verify my limits left and right. And I can also take a look at the rafters. I'm pretty sure this is not a load-bearing wall. Uh, the rafters and the ceiling run parallel and uh, with with this uh, wall so there's no weight on this wall but I'll verify all that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the outsides of each stud and you can see my cut lines horizontally here and that way if I decide not to do this I can reattach the same piece of sheetrock using this stud I'll fill it in patch it paint it and you'll never tell it was there so the next step is a vacuum and my sheetrock cutter and making an access hole and taking a look on the inside. 
Well, it isn't the prettiest hole I've ever made, but I was successful in uh, getting my hole made, and I'm going to try to take you inside the hole so you can see that indeed I have a pretty good amount of space down there. Looks like about two and a half, three foot deep, and it goes to each side. And here you can see the back wall of the shower. That's the little uh, niche in the shower wall that uh, you set your junk on and the plumbing that goes to the shower. So I have defi definitely plenty of room here. So now I'm gonna take some uh, measurements out to each side and find out where my, uh, my limits are and then I'll determine where my, uh, my final uh, 36 inch center of my hole is gonna be and I'll get that all marked out on the wall. Um, then it's time to get some supplies. All right, so now I've taken a series of measurements just to show you the layout of the tube. I measured inside the box itself, and I found that the box terminated here. Basically, that is this wall right here, which has got all the air conditioning, the solid wall that way, and the solid wall going this way. This is as far right as I can go. And then I measured, again, the far limits of the wall here. And from that I found a, a center line. Now what I wanted to do is not center the niche in the available space, but I wanted it to go as far right as possible so I would have as much of a gap from this corner to a niche. I didn't want it too close to this this corner. So I basically found the wall and measured 42 inches, which is what's the size of the box inside the niche opening will be. From that I determined the center line, half of my 42, that this will be the center of my niche. The niche is going to be 36 inches wide, recess on each side. So I measured 18 inches of each side and got my 36 inch mark here and my 36 inch mark here. Now this will not be the cut line. I'm actually going to cut the wall 3 eighths of an inch in bigger than the actual finished product. Why? Well if you think about it I'm going to have a stud here then I'm going to have to, I'm going to put a quarter inch sheetrock so I can make this radius in the bend at the top and then by the time you put some corner beading and the thickness of the mud, the finished after it's sanded and painted should be 36, but I have to account for the sheetrock and the corner beading and the mud. So I'm going to cut 3 eighths of an inch outside my 36 inch line all the way. On the both sides I'm going to have to make, I got my, here's my cut line for here. I'm going to extend these lines vertical. Then I'm going to have to trace the pattern. I'll use some cardboard. I'll trace the pattern at the top of this arch dropping down from my crown molding so that will help me determine my work that will make the overall lines uh, cut the uh, sheetrock to the finished size plus 38 3 eighths of an inch on each side so that time I finish it my actual arched opening will match exactly the 36 inch arched opening on that side so the first thing is to finish drawing my lines and my pattern and then I'll cut the sheetrock and I won't have to do any sheetrocking on the outside of this wall I'll just need to do the sheet rocking on the face of the arch up and around and a little bit on the inside. The box itself on three sides is going to be shiplap siding, so I won't have very much sheet rock at all to do. We'll get to that point, I'll show you more. But the next thing is to finish my layout and to cut the actual sheet rock out of the way so I'll have a finished sheet rock opening on this side of the wall. Okay, after about two days of work, you can see that I have roughed out the archway. It's going to need some refinement, of course, and you can now better see the space that I'm working with. Inside, I had to install an arched opening to header, rather. Uh, you can see all sorts of places on YouTube how to make those, and I had to add... Uh, an additional stud so I can eventually have my 42 inches. I have way too much space here so what I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to have to build a sidewall 
to get the distance I need and then a back wall here about 13 inches 12 inches deep it'll be 12 inches after it's all said and done so next is to frame these two walls and to get some electrical and I'm gonna have to build some sort of a header or ceiling up there in order to conceal the wire and hold the light so that's what it's like now the next segment of video will be with all the framing complete and some wire and run okay here we are at day three and as you can see I have now finished the framing uh, erased the floor and just to show you the height I was going for is this is about the top of the shoe and base combo that I had and this is the uh, sheetrock I'll be putting down it's 3 8 and as you can see that when I put it there they're going to be pretty flush I'll put some corner beading and mud and tape and so this will be my floor and I have insulated just because there is a bathroom on the other side and now I have this open air I wanted to provide a little more sound deadening and in the ceiling you can see I've added a couple two buys to lower the ceiling enough to put in my mechanism and my LED small little LED light it's all been wired and so now we're ready to uh, wrap the uh, perimeter of the art in uh, sheetrock we'll also have to sheetrock this little small wall here and uh, up above very little sheetrocking mostly just the corners that I'm gonna have to put the uh, corner bead on mud and tape all that and we'll fix all the little imperfections and get it nice and arced and round and after that it's just a matter of drying and painting uh, what the plans are is to put a shelf a glass shelf about every 16 inches and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with two two and a half layers of shiplap shiplap is about five five and a quarter inches high per board and after I get at 16 inches I'm gonna lay a piece of glass across the top edge all three sides and that will be my support I'll go up another 16 inches set the glass on top of the three sides of the uh, bead the uh, shiplap rather and I'll do four glass shelves like that glass shelves are in order they're three eighths of an inch thick which is pretty heavy duty and that'll provide me good support since the only uh, support for the glass will be the three side two sides to back so I'll update you once we get much more of the sheetrocking done and you can see what it's like as that's going okay it's time for a progress update you can see now that I have added uh, the sheetrock to the uh, inside of the arc and I've added it to the inside wall as well let's see if we can get you a shot in there yeah inside of the wall uh, this will be painted the same white as the background of the shiplap and you can see that uh, there is called a uh, wool skein paint uh, that I'll paint the outside of the wall and the inside of the uh, arc opening you can see also that I after I sanded down the sheetrock mud I sprayed this uh, finish on there which matches pretty closely the actual finish on the uh, finished wall it's called orange peel so I primed it after sanding let that dry sprayed the texture on let that dry and then came back and primed one more time on top of the texture so now my texture matches my wall pretty well I just temporarily installed my light up top just to give me some more light to work with and so tomorrow I'll be painting the wall in that corner where I have it taped off all the way over to this corner over here and so the outside of it will be done and then I'll start I've got to wait on the uh, glass shelves to arrive before I can actually uh, put in the uh, shiplap because I got to build it up put a piece of glass build it up put a piece of glass and so I'll need all my glass pieces here when I do that I'll do some touch-up painting and uh, this project will be done but um, I'll come back and show you what it looks like uh, as the shiplap is going on so you can kind of see uh, the build-up process on that and then one more final and and so what uh, is involved and so here we are in the process of layering the 
shiplap and the glass you can see I have done several layers three and a half or so layers of shiplap that gave me 16 inches then I laid a piece of glass on the edge on all three sides this is three eighths thick glass a little bit thicker just because there's no center support it's just a perimeter on three sides and I'm continuing to layer up I'll have four pieces of glass uh, the wife asked how I would ever get these out if one ever cracked or broke I want to take you inside and show you that there is about a half inch gap here and the way to get these out would be just remove one side piece however you could get that out slide this forward on that gap which would clear the back edge support which would be back on this edge back in here and then just simply lift the glass out so it's been designed to where the glass can be removed with a minimum amount of work if necessary so I'll back up show you how the progress is going and when I'm all the way done completely on the inside and you can see I've got my light wired up now I'll show you a, a final video just see I did shiplap ceiling on the shiplap on the ceiling with a little light controlled by the switch I installed on the side I'll show you the complete version and give you the uh, good bad and ugly of the process and now here we are with the final product I'll get a little close-up and you can see all of the shiplap has been installed on the uh, the back and the side both sides and I'm going to turn off this light so you can see it's also up in the ceiling area with the LED pivotable light and my wife is throwing a few pieces of decor there and this is just a let you see kind of what the finished product is so now we'll talk about the good the bad and the ugly it took me about a week uh, to do the whole job I mean, a lot of that was putting two coats of paint on the ship lap out in the garage and a lot of waiting time for various level layers of sheetrock to dry and then painting and then installing the ship lap and touch up painting multiple coats and more drying time I would say the only imperfection is, don't know how well you can tell, but the top of the arc is not perfect. Uh, what had happened there is I made an arc using an existing one as a template and I had um, the kind of the header area made up ready to go. But when I got inside the box, there was some uh, extra studs, double studs by that word is now my light switch and I couldn't go quite as wide as I wanted and therefore the geometry of the arc was changed by a half inch or so and that really changed things for me but uh, I haven't given up I, I just wanted to get the box done and and let you see what's like I will go back into the upper uh, right side of the arc and, and begin to work that with a little more sheetrock mud and get it a little more closer to a perfect arc uh, I can do that uh, anytime I just wanted to get the main product complete so you could see it the base has been reinstalled. I just simply took it off and put the same base shoe combination back in place. Um, the glass has been installed. And as you can see, I'm going to turn the light back on here. The way I did it was I pinched it between the upper and the lower piece of shiplap. Now, I had mentioned in an early portion of the video, I did design a way to get the glass out if it was ever damaged or broken. And that's primarily, I'm going to move on the inside of the box, you'll see that there is a cap there. The way you would get this out would be just simply remove one piece of siding, slide the glass forward towards the gap enough to clear the half inch that lip that this is sitting on. So slide this glass forward and then lift it enough to get it past the next piece of ship lap and then remove the piece totally and then simply reinstall a piece of glass and put the siding the one piece of siding back and that's the design to where it is um, a little bit of work but won't have to do too much to get the glass out if it ever needs it but this is 3 8 inch glass it's a lot thicker 
just because I'm only really supporting the glass on the three sides of the ship lap. But it's still plenty strong. It, these things are uh, in there perfect. I, I built the box 42 and a half inches wide. I got my glass 42 and a quarter. That gave me an inch on each side. And actually, by the time I put it in there, it was pretty snug without being so tight that is, if the any portion of the box expands and contracts, it's not going to pinch the glass. So uh, I hope you got some inspiration from this series of videos as to if you have a nice spot. Um, it's not that much work. So just to give you a price point, I spent about $300 on material, which is the shiplap and the lumber and some paint and things of that nature. The uh, shelf, glass shelves were $50 a piece, so that's $200. So the whole project cost about $500. And rough guesstimate is that this increased the value of the house by eh, $2,500 or $2,000, however you want to call it. Somewhere between four and five times the value. And so now you see I have a kind of a pair of sister arched openings here. And um, there's other videos that I've done on various projects. Just uh, search on my name and you can find them. It's Kevin Lyday, K-E-V-I-N-L-Y-D-A-Y. And uh, good luck on your projects.